So in this video, we're going to talk about basic interaction with the Cisco command line interface. Now, finally, after all of these slideshows we've gone through and all the basic knowledge we've gathered up to this point, we finally get to interact with some actual Cisco hardware. So let's get started. Normally, when you connect a console cable to a switch, much as I have here to my Cisco 2960, you will get this interface. It tells you that the console is available. Press return to get started. This switch has absolutely no configuration on it, so it is as vanilla and as generic as we're going to see. And of course, we will go through the process of configuring it and getting it up and functioning on the network elsewhere in the course. But this video is just about how to interact with the command line interface. Now, normally when you log into a switch, you are presented with what's called the user exec prompt. And you can tell it's the user exec because it has this greater than sign as the last character of the prompt. Now, the Cisco CLI is very straightforward. We'll just dig in here and show you some of the commands you can use and some of the ways you can interact with the command line for command line editing. Your best friend in this situation will be the question mark key. You enter a question mark and you get commands that are valid for your specific context. In this case, we've not started to enter any other commands, so we see all the commands that are available to us. And obviously, since we are in user exec mode, these commands are a subset of all of the commands available to configure the switch or check the status or so on and so forth. Now, if we start to enter a command, for example, if we enter show and enter a question mark after show, it shows us everything that's valid for the show command. In this case, we can do show crypto or show EPM or show flash. One of the things you'll notice if you've dealt with any Cisco hardware is you don't see the run command in here. Normally it would be right here after Armon, but because we're in user exec mode, we don't have the option to show the running configuration. Now we can show inventory, for example. So if we do show inventory, obviously the inventory in the fixed configuration switch will be the switch, which is a 296048 port, and this gives you the serial number, and the part ID, and so on and so forth. Not really anything that's useful in most cases. On a router, that's a little different, because you can actually do show inventory, and it will tell you if the router has any DSPs or any line cards, T1, so on and so forth. But for a switch, which is what we're on now, that's all you get, at least in user exec mode. So now, as an example, I'm going to enter a command that's not valid. For example, I will type show run and hit enter. And it actually tells us invalid input detected at caret marker. And it shows you where in your command line you typed an incorrect command. In this case, it doesn't recognize run as a valid argument for the show command because, again, we're in user exec mode. So it's pointing at this run saying you can't enter run as an argument for the show command. Now, this question mark help works even if there's more than one argument required. For example, if we do show VTP, and hit question mark, we see that the valid commands for this point in the command line is counters or status. So if we do show VTP status and hit question mark, it says there's nothing else you can do. You can pipe it out to a file or pipe it out to another command, or you can hit the carriage return and just run the command. In this case, we do show VTP status. We're not running VTP because this guy has a generic vanilla out of the box configuration. So you'll notice that one of the options for the show VTP status was the output modifiers. The output modifiers can be your best friend, especially if you are doing a show run on a router or a switch where the running configuration is just impossibly long and you only want to pull out certain parts of the configuration. So we'll do show VTP status and we'll do the pipe, which is shift and the key over the enter key that's above the backslash. If we do that and we hit question mark, we get several options for the redirection commands. Now these vary based upon the platform and upon the version of the iOS that you're running on the device. For example, some of the routers that you'll see as we progress through this course will actually include a section command. So you can say pull out just the EIGRP section or just the RIP section and show me just those configuration commands. This switch does not support the section command, but we can do begin or count, exclude, format, or include. So for example, let's say we wanted to include lines that included the word mode. So we do include, and then we type mode, and you'll notice the only lines that get returned are these three here, the operating mode, the pruning mode, and the VTP V2 mode. Those three lines are the only ones that are returned. So if you were running, for example, a show interface status, 
and we piped that through and we only want to include lines that have the word down in them. Obviously there's none that include the word down. Okay, so it's not connect in this particular iOS. So if we do show interface status, we do include not connect. I may have just hit a bug in this particular version of the iOS. At any rate, it should pull out any lines that have the not connect word in it. And the more astute among you may have noticed that I didn't actually enter all of the commands up here. I didn't do show interface status pipe include not connect. Which by the way, over the course of the break, I actually opened up another console window and I figured out the reason that that didn't work is that the show interface stat is different than show interface status. And that's what the command is actually supposed to do. In this case, it looks exactly the same as the previous command because there's only two interfaces on the switch that's actually connected to something else. But all of that aside, you'll notice that I didn't actually spell out the word show, interface, and include. And that is another feature of the Cisco iOS. And it's kind of a lifesaver in that Cisco only requires you to enter enough of the command so that it is not ambiguous. For example, if we go back here to the help, we notice that, for example, there are two commands that start with DIS, disable and disconnect. So if we were just to try to enter DIS and hit the question mark, it would actually tell us ambiguous command DIS. It doesn't know if we mean disable or disconnect. In this case, if we were to go back and do DIS A, it would know, oh, you want to disable certain commands from certain privilege levels. And we'll get into how exactly to do that elsewhere in the course when we talk about securing a switch, or we'll at least touch on the subject. We won't actually delve too deeply into it. But this just goes to show you that Cisco's pretty intelligent when it comes to these types of things. Another lifesaver is tab completion. For example, if I were just to do that same DIS and hit tab, you notice that right now it doesn't actually give me anything other than the same command I've been typing in. But if I were to do DIS A and hit tab, then it fills out the rest of the word for me. Now again, that's just an extension of the same logic that figures out what commands you mean after you've entered enough characters. But it's also a good sanity check so that you know what commands you're actually entering. And even though I don't have to enter in the entire word disable, I always hit tab or most always hit tab just so I know, hey, it's actually disabling something and not disconnecting something. Going back to the ambiguity question, if I were to do DIS and hit question mark, it would show me that the only two commands to start with DIS are disable and disconnect. Now that's different than if I enter space and question mark. This first command is saying what starts with DIS. The second is saying my first command is DIS. What other arguments can I specify for the dis command? In this case, it's saying, hey, that's too ambiguous. I don't know what it is. In this case, it's saying you can either disable or disconnect. So enough mucking around here in user exec mode. Go into privileged exec mode. Privileged exec is its technical name. Most anyone that deals with Cisco switches will call it enable mode. And quite simply, that's because that's the command you enter to get to privileged exec mode. You do enable. You'll notice that we can enable to a certain level if we want to do testing. Or we can just hit enable. And you'll notice that now our prompt has changed to have a pound sign or a hash mark at the end of it. And that indicates that we have more commands available to us. In this case, since we enabled with no other commands or no other arguments after it, we are automatically at enable level 15. In this case, if we hit the question mark, you'll notice there's a lot more commands available to us because we are now the switch administrator. There's four pages of commands or three and a half pages of commands. And the most common command, show run, we can actually show the running configuration of the switch now, go all the way down through all of these. Like I said, it's purely generic. So there's really nothing in there to write home about. Also, now that we are in privileged exec mode, we can do show run and we can look at some of the redirection commands available to us. And you'll notice that now we can actually take the output of commands and send it out to a URL. In this case, an FTP is the most common, although you can do HTTP with certain configurations. You can just flat out redirect it to that URL and overwrite any file that happens to be there. You can copy it to a URL. And these URLs can be anything that supports file operations. Again, a TFTP or an FTP server are the most common, but you can also write the configuration out to another file on the flash. For example, if we do R for redirect, you'll notice that there are all of the URLs we can send it to, flash, FTP, NVRAM, we can put it out to an SCP or a TFTP server. 
In this case, we could do flash and do run run2.txt. And that redirects the running config out to this run run2.txt if you had to send it into Cisco support or you needed to send it to another engineer for review. And now you can look on the flash and you can see there's a run run2.txt out there along with the actual running configuration, which there is no running configuration because this is generic and out of the box. Again, you can also do a T, which says T it out to run to, or I have to specify flash actually, it's flash run run2.txt. And I'm going to overwrite this file. The difference between redirect and T is that T actually sends it out to the display as well. So if you want to be certain what you send out to that file is the correct information, you can T it out to both the display and the file. And that's pretty much the basics of interacting with the command line interface. There are some command line editing tools or editing shortcuts that allow you to jump to the beginning of the line or jump to the end of the line or so on and so forth. And while we won't go over all of them here, we will go over some of the more common ones that you'll use every day. The first is just like the Windows command prompt, if you hit up arrow, you can get the last command or the last few commands that were run inside this console session. There's all the commands that I ran as part of this particular video. You can also jump the cursor to the beginning of the line by hitting Control A. That jumps the cursor to the beginning of the line. Control E jumps it to the end of the command line. And of course you can do Escape B to go back one word or Escape F to do forward one word. Now I've made a handy dandy chart of all of the command line editing keys and it's included as part of the work files for this course. You can go over them in your spare time. You really won't be tested on them, but they are good to know, especially if you're having to issue a really long command on the command line or a really long configuration directive and you mess up one little part of it. You misspell a word and you don't want to have to retype in the entire command or hit the back arrow half a dozen times to get back to exactly where you messed up. You can use these command line editing tools to get to exactly the part of the command line you're after. And that's pretty much it. That covers our basic introduction to the Cisco command line interface.